the hard growth comes <clears throat> in hard times. So going back to that, loving your fate, you know, it's what can I get? What can I get out of this? Dogs and fleas, pull up a chair and sit on your knees. We have a story to tell you that we are still learning about. Amen. Welcome to Talk the Walk. The name of this fella is Henry Moses. I'm Jared Moreland. And I'm Gabriel Moses. We are super happy to be here and thank you for joining us wherever Wherever you may may be. be. You're Jared Moreland what? I thought he was going to say. You're Jared Allen Moreland. I thought he said yabba dabba. (laughs) <laughs> yabba dabba do yabba dabba yabba dabba <laughs> so back to the conversation we were kind of having a conversation leading up to this and we just decided we need to get this bad boy going and we were talking about christmas shopping christmas gifts i get that it's that we're past christmas now and and uh, all that good stuff but but we were talking about gifts jared why don't you go ahead and pick up from Oh, I was just I, saying I, I was where you <clears throat> you started off from on that. Yeah, I was saying I wasn't really excited about what I got Angel for Christmas. We have this shared list that we use <clears throat> on our phones and Which we is add handy. Yeah, we Pretty add cool. to it throughout the Back, year. You're gonna have to tell me about that. Yeah, we just share a note and we uh Angel has oh, an okay. Angel's wish list and Jared has a Jared's wish list. We both can see it, and so we just add stuff throughout the year <clears throat> and people can use that for Christmas, birthdays, anything, you know, you anything, anniversary, Mother's Day, Father's Which Day. This could be super handy because <clears throat> I do get lost sometimes when Carrie's birthday comes up or Valentine's or anything comes up. Mm-hmm. I do get lost in what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And, but the thing is, is you both see the list all the time. Mm-hmm. And so it was real handy when I was getting Angel's Christmas and mm-hmm. I was super excited about it and, and, uh, kind of. And then, Leading up to Christmas, I was like, man, I'm not excited no. about her opening no. gifts because mm-hmm. she just kind of knows everything on the list. And then it just dawned on me last minute, two things I could get her that she didn't ask for, wasn't on her list, and I knew she would love. And that made it exciting to get into Christmas. And then yeah. that led into conversation where you said, it's frustrating. You know, you know how well somebody knows you or pays attention to by you what they get by you. what they get you. By what they get you. <laughs> That's the way I see it because, because I was going to, you know, I, I drew my nephew justice, uh, to give a gift to our family draws names, big old family. It's too many people. It's crazy. I mean, you have to, you'd have it's to, hard. you'd have to go take out a second mortgage every Christmas, have it paid off by the next Christmas. Have a mortgage. fourth mortgage. I mean, but if you do a need a, mortgage. but if you do need a second yeah. mortgage, I know who to send you to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you or Gabe, either we, one. We got you covered. Yeah. We got you covered. Give me a for holler. Your, for all your Christmas needs. Give me a caller, uh, a holler, uh, or Gabe a holler. Holla. Uh, this will be Ain't our first no commercial. Providence there. Home Loans, Amarillo, Texas, 806-367-8173. And oh we will goodness. take care of all your mortgage. This podcast needs. is brought to you by. That's right. Sponsored <laughs> by Providence Home Loans. Our first commercial. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But, but no, I think, uh, I think, uh, in, in getting gifts. So I was supposed to get my nephew, just, I drew his name and, and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a Navy guy and, um, and his wife is an accountant and they're, they're doing really pretty well, way better than I was at that age. Um, but, but, uh, you know, I was talking to his mom, Jenny, who's been on the show, our sister, um, I was talking to her about it. And she was like, I'll just give him cash, you know, this and that. And at first I thought, okay, that's easy. But same thing. I just, I I was struggling to be excited at all about that, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and, uh, they're going to FaceTime in, you know, they're in Virginia and they're going to FaceTime in and, and, uh, be part of things. And I thought, Oh, open my gift and cash. Hey, look what uncle got me. Good job taking the easy way out. Uncle Hank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cause it's kind of like, you know, you know, that cash is fun. You know, you, you do when someone gets cash, it is fun to get cash. Yeah. But, But, but then comes that part that goes, it's not real. No, well, you just stick it in with the rest of your cash. You, uh, the and, person and it becomes nothing. There's no gift yeah. there. There's no, there's gift, no gift that lasts. No, 
the the best gift I ever got There's Carrie anything was this foot massager. Thing. Yeah. And that thing is still the best gift I ever got her. Yeah. What she would really love is if you just rub her feet. I do rub her feet. Boy. Don't go by. She so I saw so I, so I took time <laughs> I took time to kind of think about it. And I ended up getting him this what's called a hover pen and a journal. And to write, you know, he's planning on going into business and doing these things and just kind of start to journal what his plans are and something mm-hmm. that would be personal to him. And, uh, you know, I put a lot of time into, into Sadie's, my, my little girl, my little goddaughter and, and, uh, into Brandy who I'm dating and what her, th- you know, I, but, I, but, but the more I put at first, it's gives you a bit of anxiety. Like it's stressful. <laughs> I don't Trying know what he wants. Figure out the right gift, and especially people that pretty much have everything they need. It's like, you know, that's interesting. What? what, what that's interesting. You say that have everything you need thing, because man alive, most of the people that I think of that I know, I mean, they're not rich, but they do have everything that they need. Yeah. But again, I think that's still. It's easy to say that, like, well, how do you buy for a rich person, or how do you yeah, buy for somebody right. who has everything they need? Well, you it's a cop if out. You knew them if well you enough. Know if them you well know them well enough, or if you just take the time, and you might not—that was my point, right? You might not realize that you do know them, but when you start to take the time to think about it, like for Sadie, you got to meditate on for them. Sadie. I know that she is is getting into cooking a lot. You know, she's in college, but she's really been putting time into learning how to cook. You know, so I got her a crock pot. That's I, know cute. When, I know when she comes down to see me, um, she a lot of times when she's going to bed, she'll watch a movie on her iPhone. Well, it's this little bitty iPhone. So I found this really cool um, portable computer screen oh, that cool. you can either hook up to your computer and make it a double screen, up to your laptop and make it an automatic double screen, or you can use it to hook your phone into or your iPad or whatever and project whatever you're watching onto this nice screen that's right next to you you know so these little things that tell her i know you uh for brandy i got her these things anyway i'm not going to the whole list but (laughs) but (laughs) i'm like here we go man these are the things that tell people hey i love you but at first i thought these people don't need anything what am i gonna and after i took some time to think about it I, i started getting like you said excited I was like, oh, this is going to bless her or this is going to bless him. And, and you don't tell up, them, I think about them, I understand, and I know them. And you don't holler at that person like a week before Christmas and say, hey, what's something you'd like to get for <laughs> Christmas? That's just like getting a terrible, list. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. No, right. You can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with Sadie. I, you can I, do that with little kids. Yeah, because they forgot. What now you can with talk. little kids, they, they don't care. They're like, I really want. Oh yeah, this. Yeah, but but Sa- yeah. Sass oh, wanted, she wanted harder. Yeah. She wanted a, a scroll that she could write on. I'm like, she really yeah. knows what she wants, and that's what it's going to be. Yeah, that's fine for kids. That's great for kids. But adults, like, it's more important. Like, like our youngest sister Rebecca, who's also been on here. Mm-hmm. She, um, she, man. They usually make their gifts, oh. like handmade. See, they're those that make yeah, those personalized <laughs> calendars. Oh, they and it's they are those the people it's and these always. gifts. I'm like, I wouldn't trade these gifts for anything. Well, we just had, uh, we just had our brother-in-law Sean Jenny's husband. We just had his birthday. His, his birthday's on the twentieth. Mm-hmm. What? Continue. Okay. <laughs> So we just had his birthday on the 20th and, um, boo, you know, I brought a really cool gift that I bought (laughs) and, and boo, Rebecca, uh, she made hers. Of course they're really skilled. Josh is a, you know, craftsman. He is a craftsman stuff and tables and boo's artistic. So they kind of, can join all this together and, and make their gifts. Well, anyway, so she made what's called a 3d picture, mm. um, which is really cool. Have you ever seen those? No. Uh, oh, I'll show you one of mine. I, I think I did. We had a lady at work that just got one. It sits on her desk and it has a curve to it, but it's the same picture on both sides. No, but that no. sounds cool. It's really cool too. No, it's basically where they take a picture, something that's really treasured to you. And then they kind of cut part of it out. And then they, 
put the first layer in resin and then the part that they want to stand out 3d oh they put on top of that in its old spot to where it kind of stands out so i've got jesus being baptized and he's kind of 3d i'll show you that on the mantle and they make them oh uh, they make them i'd have to order mm-hmm. something like that on oh it's a, from somebody that could make them easy. yeah um well boo did it of sherlock and which was Sean's favorite dog that he ever had that passed away not too long ago. Oh man. And him with this big old smile on his face and Sean with a big smile on his face. No, Sherlock had a big, (laughs) big smile on his face. And then they took Sherlock's collar and put it on the bottom of the frame and mounted it onto the frame. Oh my God. So Sean could barely talk. I mean, he really couldn't talk. He was so choked up by it. I was like, well, my gift was stupid. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Which Sean was really appreciative. If he heard me saying this, he'd be like, "No, you're getting. I like them both. You know." But that's yeah. the risk you take when Boo shows up at a party. That's what you just you about to get swatted. You give down. you give <laughs> your gift on another day, the day before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You because you, she's gonna space between the that's the time that Boo gives no. hers and you give yours. Yep. spread it out. Just spread it out because because yours is not going to. You could spend a million dollars on it. Well, I think coming out of the Christmas season, what we can take from even this conversation is, man, let's slow down and spend time with people. When we encounter someone, take the time. A lot of times it's just five or ten minutes to listen to what they have to say, Mm -hmm. have intentional conversation Mm -hmm. with them, and not be so rushed. Because how many times, I think we talked about this before, you see somebody in the store, but you're in a hurry. Mm-hmm. And you're like trying to avoid them. You don't want them to see you. But that's really what gets us in a position where we yeah. don't know what to give people is because we're just too busy to pay attention yeah. to what's going on in their yeah, life because we only care about what's going on in our life. Yeah, Ooh. that is true. That's very true. And so the gift giving thing is very, it's very personal. It can be very personal. Mm-hmm. So I love it. It's stressful. And when you're, when it's done, you're glad it's done. But and it's cool to watch let it be a blessing to cool. somebody. And then I've also gotten to the point where I'm like, well, if they don't like it, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like if they don't show, because you also go into it hoping that they're going to respond the way you want them to respond, right? Because that says, <laughs> you <laughs> killed it. You yeah. Know? Again, we're looking for affirmation. I was thinking when you were, right, right. When you were talking about uh, Sadie and getting into cooking and the cookbook, I was like, I remember growing up, my grandmother taking me to this little Assembly of God Pentecostal church. And about every year or three or four years, all the little old ladies would get together all the recipes and get a put it printed in a cookbook and then they would sell it. That's cute. It's terrible. That's 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 I mean (laughs) you'd get I was thinking you'd like them. I probably appreciate it more now. How about that? You were almost 50 years oh, old. Like, oh, when you're it's young. super cool. But when you're young. Wait, 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 wait. You're saying they gave you the gift? No, I was just thinking, what if you just sent Sadie one of those little homemade church cookbooks? She'd been like, Hanky, what's this? But when you're Man, older, I, like I have my yeah. grandmother's ones from church back in the day, super sentimental to me now. Yeah. And since this is post Christmas, like David asked for a sewing machine for Christmas. Because he wants to learn how to sew. Yep. And uh, he even sent us the link. But I was like, Angel, what if I took my mom's sewing machine that I think was my grandmother's that was 1958 yeah. oh. and I restored it myself? Yeah. And that's what he that's... got for Christmas. So in the cabinet, restained the wood anyway. But Dang, dude. Yeah. Oh, man, I All out. A picture of this. All out. Yeah. It's pretty Go cool. So to get that and finding the parts, found the owner's manual that I could download and print, put in a binder and mm-hmm. finding parts and redoing the wiring. Had a neighbor that helped me rewire the internals of the motor. It was cool. It was cool. Yeah. Dang, dude, I got to see a picture of this. Yeah. That's bad to the bone. But that's a, that's that whole thing about slow down. Yeah. Because you could have easily pushed a button on Amazon. Well, I could have paid 200 yeah. bucks and just bought Taking one. the time to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff, yeah. That being involved, putting yourself into something is mm-hmm. different than just buying some cool thing it's different well i don't have the creativity to i mean just actually physically i just the creative gene is is not yeah not some people do have more of a yeah they, they go that direction yeah maybe if i put the time into it but i think if i created something for somebody 
My now we did make those plates for mom for we did. for we did. her seventieth oh, birthday. Yeah. And I felt real good about mine. Real good. I, I felt like mine was gonna take the cake because I couldn't believe how well it came out. Like we, we painted on those were bad to the bone plates that people did. But it was an idea. The more I saw other people's coming out, I was like how is, does our family have this many people that are this, this good talented? This yeah, it was crazy. Drawing birds. You, you are talented, though, because I want to ask a follow-up, because the last time or two times ago, that was the last time you and I recorded, because uh-huh. Gabe called in sick. Uh, <laughs> we You were going to your company uh, holiday party. And I encouraged you because you're the guy that I love that when you show up with a gift, if it you bought it at Best Buy, you bring it wrapped in the Best yeah. Buy bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you were like, man, I bought this gift bag. And I said, dude, just put the sack inside the gift bag and then don't even undo the tissue paper. I just put the tissue. Too. Did you still well, leave it that way? That. Yeah. How'd it oh, go yeah. over? Oh, they thought they thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah. Oh, and then I, I told Brandy because Brandy was the one that made me buy the <laughs> Tissue paper. tissue paper. I was like, it's just a, it's just a white elephant. Like we don't need to get all fancy with this thing. And so, um, which I am all for, you know, <laughs> making somebody feel special. I'll at least get a gift bag now and do the tissue paper. I've learned how to do that, all that. I've got better at it, but yeah, by nature, I'd rather be funny. Then, so did you stick with correct. it and just leave the yeah, tissue paper I, I in its original it in packaging? Bag. I think I showed you, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then I <laughs> oh, took yeah. the tissue paper, left it in the little plastic, you know, wrapping that it comes in unopened. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. And slid it in the bag to where it was sticking up. I'm like, okay, I'll put the tissue paper in. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice awesome. thing about that is the next person can still use it all. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the like gift you, that keeps on giving. The gift that keeps on giving. Yep. That's yep. awesome. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was pretty funny. Gift giving. Gift giving. Boom. So, I guess on that note, discussion done. Discussion done. You know we can keep going. The gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Easily. Easily uh, keep going. So, you got to call it. So, recently, I was going through... Uh, I was going through some stuff. Do y'all ever go through stuff? Is it just me? Never. It's just me? Just yeah. once in a blue moon. Me Not really. You do on the occasion? Not really, but sometimes. I mean, you have six kids. I figure you got to go through stuff every night. Nah, not really. My well, life's perfect. It's just me. I'm, yeah. I'm an experienced, well-seasoned, going through stuff kind of guy. <laughs> well, you, you've got it down to an art. Yeah, I can go through some stuff. I mean, let me ask y'all this. Do you ever have a day that goes by where you don't go through something? Now, there's always some form of challenge or yep. obstacle or something. That's what I think. And then how, I mean, I'm on I mean, you have your better days than other days, but in all, you're going to have something that kicks you in the pants at some point during the day. That's probably the best way to say it. That's why you, I'm off to a great start once in a while. Then. Yeah, today's a great start. Yeah, yeah I'm, today's I'm good a great today. start. Agreed. <laughs> once yes. in, that's why once in a while yes. you say this day was the best day ever because... Once in a blue moon, nothing goes wrong. Yeah. Nothing really goes wrong that day. But all the rest of them, oh, yeah. 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 It's challenges. If I sleep all the way through a day, it's perfect. Nothing happens. (laughs) Other than that, I don't know. But so I was having, you know, and we've talked about it a little bit on here. Like, man, our our mortgage company has gone through some transition stuff. And then the the, the, the economy, the market, all that kind of stuff. Mm Yeah. And uh don't want to bore anybody with all that, but um but it has certainly been challenging, right, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of having some different things going on and, and I was texting with our, our producer, Dr. Holy Father Miles uh, uh Barfield Benitez. Barfield <laughs> Benitez. Oh, and now we Barfield. have the Holy Son. Yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. Oh, you haven't heard the last, you haven't heard our most recent podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Why are you pointing at me, man? Leave me out of the oh, you're, you're the You're the holy son. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I, uh, <laughs> this ought to be good. I'm, you, I'm you looking forward to this. You did the pictures in the. Uh, when when you were, yeah. That we there. talked about that. Oh, gee. So, yeah. Miles is the holy Y'all father. Forget, the- Y'all cannot listen to Henry and Jared. Do not take anything they say seriously. Just, just. Holy son. 
It's oh. too late to apologize. Oh boy. So yeah, so this is Let a good, it go. this is a good topic for you. I'm more, <laughs> uh, so so Miles texts me and this is what he texts me. Um uh, now I don't know that I'm pronouncing this right, but it's Latin. So I think it's pretty simple, but I'll be curious to see what y'all's pronunciations are as well. And then I do have pulled up the correct correct pronunciation. pronunciation. Though I okay. haven't looked at it yet. What you got? So that we'll play it and see if it's see if it's correct. But Amor Fati spelled A M O R, and then second word F A T I. He said Amor Fati, brother. The Stoic point, which means love your fate. It signifies not only accepting, but embracing and loving everything that happens, including setbacks, as a necessary part of one's journey towards self-improvement and virtue. And I, you know, you know, thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, you know, that was I needed to hear that in that moment. And I think we need to hear that, especially in the hard ones, like the, but, but even the smallest ones, you know, how we respond, kind of. That was loud. How we respond kind of tells us where our walk is at with the Lord in that in that moment. You know what I'm saying? It can be an indicator for it, sure. It can be oh, an yeah. indicator. And uh, uh, getting to the point where we embrace and love our fate for what it can do and bring to our lives, and how much better it can it can make a help us to represent the Lord, how much closer it can draw us to the Lord in how we respond, how we choose to respond. A more fati. A more fati. So so yeah, what's y'all's what's your pronunciation? A M O R F A T I. It's it's not A more fati. A more fati. A more fatty. So when I first saw yeah, that no. thrown out yeah. there, you know, Miles had just been riding us about being in this dumb bicycle thing that he wants us to be in and he sent that out and i was like oh so now you're calling me fat because it just said a more fatty <laughs> yeah. or ammer fatty i was like ammer fatty yeah i was like really bro <laughs> <laughs> so yeah because you could take that to mean love the fatty yeah love the fatty love the fatty <laughs> <laughs> i'm more I'm a more fatty. <laughs> Does it I'm a more like, fatty than you are. Yeah. That sounds like me. I'm more too. Right. Right. Me that's why. Yeah. I think. Yeah. More. Which is what? A-M-O-R-E. But my this love. one's A-M-O-R. My but love. it's the uh, same yeah. thing. A more is love. Right. My love. So, um, but, but talking about loving your fate and, uh, which by the there, way, for the record, I love this idea. Yeah. I, on a personal level, I'm like, I couldn't agree more with the idea of love your fate. Yeah. All right. Expand on that. Well, I, I mean, dude, I mean, you're in. I'm glad you're in because that's what we're talking about. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. Go for it, Holy Son. Uh, Just listen to what I say. (laughs) (laughs) This this subject is good because I've been trying to teach my kids. As one of my kids in particular, Lucy, the oldest one, she she um. She blames sometimes. Mm -hmm. She blames the other kids for her frustrations. She acts like it's their fault that something went wrong or someone else's fault on the basketball team. She's the strongest player on her basketball team. And then they get their butts whipped. And and she's like, if they did just this and done that. And she she tends to blame. So I sent her a TikTok the other day that was just saying, you know, accept being able to move forward in life means accepting the responsibility for, for your stuff, mm-hmm. for your, all of your life, accepting the responsibility that is yours, that has fallen to you to, um, make something worthwhile or not. And, um, accepting, accepting what we are instead of making excuses for it. Yeah. Uh, you, if people who complain or make blame someone else, that stuff, man, it, it stops your growth. But like, and I'm not sure if that's where this is going, but partially it is in accepting our fate. I don't think, I don't think that walking around um, in such a way where you believe that you can control your fate, you can't, because that comes to control, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Fate, fate is, you can't control your fate. You can do things to try to push in a direction, but right. in the end, there's way too much happening for you to control your own fate. Yeah. God's plans for you, what you're going through. It's that illusion of control. Are going to happen. 
They're going to happen. It, it's it's going to happen. Life's going to come your right. way, and it's going to throw yeah. you a curveball every split second of every moment. There's curveballs coming at yeah. you. You have no idea. Yeah. So try, and of course, no control, like the the illusion of control, and then having faith and trust in God mm-hmm. that His will will prevail in your life. All this, this is like the bedrock of a, to me a Christian life is you you can't you don't have control. You have to have faith and trust the Lord that he will guide your path, right? And embrace that idea. Well, you know, Jesus said, cast all your burdens on me mm-hmm. because I care for you. And he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, right? Mm-hmm. So if we're, if we're, if we're, you know, whatever circumstances we're going, whatever persecution we may be going through, hardships, whatever the case may be, because they're they're different depending on what part of the world you live in. And so if we're not, if we're sitting there always, "Ah, the weight's on me, the struggle's on me, the uh, it's, it's everything's in my control to make sure of this. And then if it's not going right, then we're, then we get in a bad mood. Are we really, you know, putting those cares on him and trusting him and trusting his ultimate, because his ultimate plan his big plan for for the destiny of the of the universe the destiny our destination um may be quite a bit different and probably is a lot of the times quite a bit different than what our little small plans are and so being able to have faith that hey god knows what he's doing i may not but even even if i'm led to the slaughter I'm going to worship you and, and, and be appreciative of all you do. So check this out. I just had a cool thought and see what y'all think about this. Don't uh, like when humans create algorithms that um, tell our phone to put an advertisement on there. We said something in a text about a suitcase, needing a suitcase. And the next thing you know, you're on some social media and a commercial pops up on your screen for a suitcase. Right. And we, as humans were like, well, you know, somebody set something up and it's kind of enamoring a little bit that they could do that. Have you ever heard mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought that, you know, mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. you're like, wow, you know, technology, what they did. Well, think of that. We get enamored by something as simple as that and annoyed, a little bit annoyed, but also we kind of like it sometimes because that little advertisement's kind of nice. It it fit what we needed. And so we go, okay, I guess I'll buy that thing. Yeah. Well, this you think about all the all the factors that go into play with six and a half, seven billion, whatever it is, seven billion, seven and a half billion people on the mm-hmm. planet that God does to constri- to however He does to make things go in the direction that will ultimately lead to Jesus coming back. All the things that were predicted, His algorithm's that big, right? We're we're impressed by an algorithm and a piece of technology that says buy this. New blender. You so know. our fate is an algorithm. It's the closest way I think we could say that we could understand I'm, it. No, that's what I'm yeah. saying. That's kind of an interesting thought that everything that happens in life is God's algorithm. God's algorithm. Us. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to take any stress on he it. He can do that. He it can he can is. do the the infinite number of things to make things go the way that they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But isn't that a more what is it? Amor fati? Yeah. Amor fati. Embracing. The fate. I mean, or loving your fate. Right? You should because you can. All we can do is make an advertisement pop mm-hmm. up on a phone. So let me ask you this. Let me, let me read this. I'm going to ask you all this question, and then then I got a scripture I want to read. But what what is the what's the point? What would be the point of loving your fate? Because naturally, I keep your it, blood pressure down. Yeah, that, that does help. <laughs> it does help with that. That is true. Better health, right? Stepping away and putting it on God's shoulders, not yours. But also appreciating the growth, I think. that. So I was kind of thinking about it. The gro- growth comes through hardships. And t- y'all tell Agreed. me if, you feel, if y'all disagree, but it doesn't come. It doesn't come. Growth does not come through easy times, um, chilling on the couch, everything go perfectly. I mean, there's no growth there. Uh, 
when you're studying throughout school, 12 years of, of just regular school, right? First through 12, well, 13, you know, kindergarten, mm-hmm. maybe right. 14 with pre-K now. <laughs> Those are 14 years of hardship. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. Nobody really likes school. Not most people don't like school. Um, yeah, they're young. They want to, you're not disciplined. You want to be out doing it. So it's kind of hardship. Ugh, I have to get up early. Ugh, it's kind of your for, first real form of hardship. You have to go through dealing with peers and learning how to be social and Stru- socialized. Structure. And all this stuff. Yeah. It stinks. You mm-hmm. just rather be at home playing with your well, now totally these video easy. games or riding dirt bikes or whatever it is that you do playing <clears> with dollies. <throat> um, but that's kind of your first era of hardships. Um, and growth, look at all the growth that comes through that. Um, the Bible says the Lord disciplines those that he loves. Well, I would say that's a hardship when we're getting disciplined. It's not comfortable. It's not fun. Um, but but it also says not to be discouraged when he disciplines you because he disciplines those. The hard growth comes <clears throat> in hard times. So going back to that and loving your fate, you know, it's what can I get? What can I get out of this? Well, speaking of but, you know, if, being wise enough to take that time to think about that. Well, I was thinking when you even talk about uh, growth and and how we grow through hardships. You know, everybody loves the uh, mountaintop experience. We used to go on a men's retreat. I think mm-hmm. you both have been where you'd go to the top of the mountain and it's beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's awesome to hang out up there. But nothing grows at the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. There's no good vegetation. The tree line, the timber line stops. Nothing grows the prettiest Mm. flowers, the best vegetation you ever see is in the valley. Mm -hmm. Growth happens. Ah. Beauty comes Mm -hmm. in the valley. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. So what, 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 what's the idea of the mountaintop then? No, when he was talking about Mm -hmm. hardship brings us Uh, closer to God and we grow, everybody loves that mountaintop experience, but it's the hardships. It's the valleys. It's the lowest spots. Where, where we have the growth soil, and even as well as tilled and yes, yeah, that's even more fertile, even in agriculture, it's the Valley that has the prettiest stuff that produces the best things. Mm-hmm. That's, that's funny. I, I climbed a mountain one time in Colorado and, um, it, it was funny. I, I climbed hard for a few hours. It took me a little while to get up there and it wasn't, you know, some 15,000 foot, whatever, it, you know, it was a mountain, but, you know, reasonable. I get up there. It's funny. I get up there. It took me a few hours to get up there. I get up there. I looked around for five minutes and it was over. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, crap. Now I got to figure out how to get down. That's right. <laughs> and I don't even know where I'm going. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, the brief moment of glory. It was. It was beautiful up there. It was a beautiful and no one was with me. I was all by myself. It was great. But then came that it only lasted for but a second. But once you got to the top, there was no more growth. You grew yeah. in the climb, in the hardship oh, yeah. of mm-hmm. getting there. And then mm-hmm. on, all, all, all the way down, it was dark. By that time, it was dark. I was hearing animal sounds. I thought bears were going to eat me. Ooh. I thought some, some animal was going to attack me. I was like, I don't know where I'm going. It's pitch black, and I can't even run because it's too dark to run. So if you'd have seen a bear, would you have been like, Amor Fadi, Amor Fadi, Amor Fadi, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. your fate is coming Here up. Here it goes. I'll just embrace the fate. <laughs> this is the end of me, Amor Fadi, man. Like, brother, I hope I taste good. <laughs> is this a good place for the, the Christian bear? The Christian bear's <laughs> joke? Sure, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so there was, a, there was this Christian man, and there was this bear. And this bear was the biggest bear in all the land, legendary bear that nobody had been able to ever, ever catch, ever shoot. And so this Christian man decides, I'm going to go hunt this bear, but I'm going to do it with one bullet because <laughs> I'm going to show God how much, my, how strong my faith is and, and all this. And so he goes and he goes to, he goes into the woods and he, you know, takes all his gear with him and he's, he's prepared. He's ready. Good hunter. And uh, so he's hunting this bear, hunting this bear. He's, you know, searching its last whereabouts and and uh, and last known whereabouts. And, and uh, you know, he, he doesn't find it. And he's kind of, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up camp and I'm going to get comfortable and, and uh, I'll continue the search tomorrow. So he, he sets up camp and all, all of a sudden he, he hears this noise behind him. <laughs> and he... Turn, he kind of sees the reflection, realizes that bear's behind him. So he he turns and he grabs his rifle just kind of out of shock and goes to bring it up and accidentally fires off the dang bullet. 
<laughs> and and now it, that bullet's gone. So what's he do? He takes off running. Now he's trying to get away from this big beast. He's running, 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 and he comes this dead end, and the dead end's a cliff. Ain't, ain't nothing, you know. He he's between this cliff and this bear, and there's nowhere to run. So he does what well, you know. He's a Christian man. He gets down. He starts praying. Lord, please let this bear be a Christian. Please let this bear be a Christian. <laughs> and, uh, and so he opens his eyes to see what the bear's doing. And the Christian bear is kneeling on his knees and he's praying. Thank you, Father, for this meal that you've delivered. To me. <laughs> <laughs> that Thank is you awesome. for this meal you provided. Uh, uh, in that moment, amor fati. Amor fati. Amor fati, my brother. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it, this is going to become our chant. Amor fati. <laughs> if we're saying it right, even. Right. <laughs> you know how... Uh, uh, Hope this isn't out of line, but you know how when you go to a restaurant, eat your appetizer. That's never a good story. No, this is a good story. This is a bad. But you go to a restaurant, get your appetizer, but you're really looking forward to the main course. Mm -hmm. You're just like, would they hurry up and bring my food? Oh, gosh. I'm so impatient. And I see your Bible opened up to the book of James, and that's where I'm at in this podcast. I'm like... I am Can ready. We Can okay. we please okay. get to okay. the meat? Okay, okay. So okay. I'm not complaining. That I'm not. No, I'm not complaining. I'm just so anxious because I think this is a great. Like, oh, you're right. A, a I've great got a idea few that I wanted to throw in there. It, it really was a deep thought. But but yes, get to thank meat. you, James. Can Warren. we have an entree, please? And did this not? I don't know if it did for y'all, but when Miles told me that, the first scripture that came to mind was James one, what verse two? Okay. Can it all join, my brothers? When you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. It says to count it all joy. And I know we bring this verse up kind of often on this podcast, but like it's saying when you meet these times, when you meet these trials, which is often, which is, is often, um, it's going to have if we're if we're handling in the right way, if we're uh, loving our fate. This is the moment that God does have us in. We're going to have an opportunity for growth. I like and for this steadfastness. Yeah. Go ahead. That, Go that ahead. that's the part that like count it all joy is something that's ingrained in my brain. Yeah. All right, but and I bet everyone's they've heard that a hundred times. Yeah, that's the one that that's a part that they put on plaques. So what does that say? Um, let steadfastness have its full effect. Have its full effect. That's a part that I'm like that that's, made that's perfect where it's at. and complete, lacking in nothing. That's where it's at. Let yeah. steadfastness yeah. have its full effect. Yeah. Like let all the things come to you that should by being following the in the word, doing what he says as all of life happens to you. Which suggests if you're not doing it this way. Mm. It's not going to have its full effect. Yeah. And you're yeah. going to have to keep going through these tests. Well, we're, we're probably going to keep going through tests our whole life. Anyway, Absolutely. Right? But it's up to us how we get to the point to where we can handle them and to be the salt of the world, which I'm going to read here in a second. But that sets us apart. What's going to draw people? Then that's the whole reason why we're here, right, is to to help people to come to the Lord. What's going to draw them when they see us act like they do in hard times? Or when they see us Ouch. with peace that surpasses all kinds of understanding in the middle of the storm, when we love our faith. Yeah. When have- they see us lose a limb, when they see us, that's why, you know, there's this whole push for, um, and I know I'm talking a lot, so I'll, I'll say it real quick, but <laughs> there's this whole push for, you know, assisted suicide. And I understand the, I understand the reasoning behind it. I get it. But the way I see it is our lives are created by God to do with as he pleases and to use to his glory. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And especially as Christians, no matter what we go through, even illness, even terminal illness, that he, for what, whatever reason, decides uh, to heal us from or not to heal us from, um, that we can use this to glorify God to allow people to see our faith in the Lord, to allow people to see our peace that like you were saying, Gabe had this at its full effect. That's salt. 
That is. Mm-hmm. That is. That is. That's when people say, whoa. And so whenever I don't love my fate and I realize somebody saw me not loving my fate, <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like, I get a little frustrated with myself. Absolutely. I'm like, Henry, you, you got to be better. We had a situation you know, this week better. at work where we, uh, man, we'd brought a team in. Worked all weekend, charged this customer a, it's a huge expedite fee. It was a twenty thousand dollar job, and uh, we had to write a full credit for it. We didn't, <clears throat> do, we didn't do a good job, and oh, no. so the the guy that oversaw that team he calls me and he's just so mad. Yeah, and yeah. Even our CEO's yeah. mad, and I'm just like super cool about it, you know. And <laughs> and uh, for a change, and they said, "How do you keep your composure?" I said. Yeah. Man, it is an expensive mistake, but can you imagine the growth that's going to happen in our yep. people? That's right. Because of this, because right. they failed. Like yep. I said, th- you don't have an opportunity yes. to grow our people yes. yep. until they fall down and fail and skin yes. their knee. And it's like they will know they'll never forget this moment. And if they do, if it doesn't affect them, then they don't need to be on our team anyway. Mm, but yeah. if you're yeah a decent human being that mm. really cares about growth and doing what's best for humanity, the company and all of that doing a good uh, job. The next time this situation presents itself, cause it will, they will know what they'll to expect, ready. what to do. They'll be, they'll ready. be ready. Like I'm excited for the growth that's going to come. Yeah. We're going to become better machinist mechanics mm. inspectors yeah. Because, yeah, because of this. Yeah. 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 This so, will grow us. You grew in a way that you wouldn't have grown before. If that didn't happen. Yeah, we can't, we don't become, what happened is, is this, this shop is a really cool shop and they do a really good job, but they started believing how good they were mm. and they got a little complacent. Didn't oh, think they could put out like the crap cowboys. work. Yeah. Like they, the cowboys. Yeah. They didn't yeah. think they could put out a bad product. <laughs> oh, we don't put out bad product. We're, we're, we believe we're, and they just started believing they were better than what they were. Yeah. It's a great learning experience. That's pride. Good, that's pride, good. pride got up in there. Oh. I mean, I so bad want to take the Cowboys bait. So I will say the fact that they did lose to the Bills does <laughs> will can make them better if they'll embrace it. So anyway. If they are more fatty. Oh, I'm more, oh. <laughs> I'm more fatty. Uh, we ha- more we fatty. will debrief on Cowboys after this okay. because yeah, we yeah. could. Okay. That's not. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the end of we the show. We don't that on here. <laughs> it could be worse. You know, if you're a especially, Raiders 49ers especially. fan, yeah. you're the you're worse. Oh, what? what was it? I was talking to, uh, I was talking to, cause here we go. <laughs> no, no, uh, let, oh yeah. We don't need to go down this rabbit hole. I, cause I do. I want to, I want to, uh, okay. what Jared was saying there, it did spark a little thought too. I, you think about it. Um, our goal in life is, is going to be number one to have a relationship with God, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's why he created us. But how useful can we be in helping others have a relationship with mm-hmm, God? That's right. Go forth, make yeah. disciples of all the nations, right? And all the nations, or however it said. Mm, that's right. And this is what we or that's our mandate. But you think about it and you go, well, whenever you're a baby, you're not very useful in that way, are you? No. You no. know, as a baby, you're just, you're, you're, you're being taken care of. And um, as you grow and grow into the five-year-old stage, the eight, now the 12 and 14, you get older and older, you become more useful. And that should be our goal is to become more useful while walking with God the whole time, while communing with the Savior and the Creator. Mm-hmm. So I like that. But it, all this says the team, your team will get better. Either one they were already better, but the pride got in the way and, and ruined their 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 art. Or two, they didn't know, and pride got in the way, it sounds like. Yeah. And now we learn. Yeah. Now we get humbled and we have more education how to be better machinists, better inspectors. And so, they're not, yeah, and it, it, it takes a special kind of evil to, to go to down this trail of thinking that they maliciously tried to cost our company money, which they didn't at all. Right. But you can cut up that. You're, you're loan guys, right? You do. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll bet in your time, because there's a lot of people that touch paperwork and processes yeah. to get somebody. Yeah. You ever had a loan go bad because one of your team members <laughs> didn't do something right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. But our tendency is yeah. we begin to think, do you know how much money you cost me? Like that was their intention was to cost you money or reputation, your commission. Yeah. Or it yeah. wasn't malicious, but had they not messed up that deal, this is, they couldn't be 
better the next time. That's Check right. this out, Jared. Yeah. Check this out. Funny you're saying So that. you should rejoice right. that you didn't get your big commission. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> Amor Fati. Amor Fati. I'm so glad Amor. I didn't get paid hey. so they could grow. Yeah. I've got I've got a similar situation right <laughs> now. Perfect. Yeah. I've got a similar situation to what you're saying right now. Everybody's telling me my my underwriter, my processor and my loan officer's assistant are all telling me that this guy's income is off. And I was about to shut this whole thing down yesterday until I call the client and I tell him, "Hey, you know, there's an issue here." This client is like I don't understand what the problem is. Like, Gabe, he goes, I promise you, I don't only work 40 hours a week. I work overtime. My 40 hours a week is there. It's there. I don't, what your paper has is wrong. And dude, I am, I'm like, I already told the realtor, this is dead. We're halfway through the contract. That's bad. And I already told everybody it's dead. We're turning it off. After I talked to the client, I'm like, my gut is telling me no. No, you're all wrong. I'm after talking yeah, to him. I'm gonna, too, yeah. I'm I'm not kidding. Like this is the most bizarre thing. I've never done this ever. I called the realtor back after talking to him. I said, "Dude, I'm not shutting this down. I my gut tells me there's something wrong here. We're gonna keep this going." He goes, "What do I tell the sellers? And I'm telling them we need more time. Like this is the work. I'm, I'm gonna find a way on this, but it's it's fun funky with this stuff." everybody's saying no and they're using this wrong information. I know it's wrong. And I'm, we're going to, I'll tell you the rest of the story after it finishes out. Oh, what? You can't do that. Dude. Like, I don't know how it's going to, the rest of the story. I don't know how it's going to play out. Our listeners care about the end of the loan process. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. But did the guy get the loan? They care about that. This guy's true. This guy for him and his family, he wants his loan bad. So we can revisit this on the next one, but there is might. there a chance? There's there is that. a chance. There is. My gut tells me that this. So the cliffhanger is stay tuned next episode <laughs> to find out if he got the did loan. The, yeah. Did the guy get and the if loan? If we don't bring it up, they'll know what happened. <laughs> yeah. And if he did or he didn't, Amor Fati. Amor Fati. We, we, we got to play into all this. I thought maybe Miles was calling in. <laughs> <laughs> we have our first caller. Yeah. Welcome. Henry, line one. <laughs> Hello, caller. Yeah, that's mom. <laughs> She'll take over the show. Oh, yeah. She'd be like, yeah. oh, I'm so yeah. glad y'all had me. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, awesome. So that's, for the anyway. listeners that don't get to hear the end of this story, Amor Fati. Amor Fati. Amor Fati. And, and love your fate. Yeah. Love your fate. Embrace it. <laughs> love it. That's so do you have... Like, uh, I have a scripture, but I don't want to step on what your is. You have Romans. Uh, No, I'm in Matthew. So Romans five, therefore, since, so I love this because what does hardships actually do? Yeah. yeah. Therefore, since we have been justified, what does it produce? There's a progression. What do hardships do? What What do hardships do? What does, I don't know. I'm not an English major, bro. I'm, I don't ju- I'm just trying to be straight. <laughs> okay, go ahead. We already Therefore, said we're machinists. Uh, yeah, we're inspectors. yeah, we're machinists and inspectors. We're not English, <laughs> English majors. majors. Yeah, that's for a whole other group of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. There, uh, Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that. But we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So, uh, again, it makes us rejoice in the sufferings. Yeah. I mean, be true on and to go with that, to go with that, I think Matthew 511 kind of goes with that. Blessed are you. When others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad when this stuff happens. What? Why would you do that? Uh, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they per, uh, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then following that, We're talking about you are the salt of the earth. That immediately falls at. But if salt has lost its taste, how do we lose our taste? If we're acting like the world, if we're acting, if we're just blending in, salt brings added flavor. So all these things, Romans, what chapter was that? That was uh, Romans 5, 1 through 5. 5, 1 through 5. And then, I I mean, I can, it's kind of funny that, then you're like, and this, and then I have 
and First Peter four twelve through nineteen wait, wait. says. I'm like you. Guys, like, you no, 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 no. You sneakers are going way too fast. I'm like, I, I wanted. I, I'm loving both of them because it does. It all attests to this amor fati thing. But that part, do that part. That progression. This leads to this. This leads to that. Read that again. Why? Because I because because it ends. It's like I already got out of it. Because it's. I oh, know I'm trying to buy time. Yeah. Don't call me out. Though. <laughs> I'm trying to just. I'm trying to just create a cool See, filler. If you had your there it actual is. Bible with He's your got little it. with your little coaster, he's for, got it. You just <laughs> okay. Not only that, but we rejoice in sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Yep. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Okay. And hope does not put us to shame. So it started with suffering, and it ends with hope. Like, this is all parts of of this idea, this fate idea, and embracing it. Because I'm like, okay, we suffer, and, and endurance comes in there. And I love it because it ends with hope, and it yeah. said hope. What was that last part? And hope endures forever or something. Um, Jared, what's up? I know he's already <laughs> he out. Knows I'm already out of it. <laughs> You're already back to Peter. Call. You're such a dog. <laughs> uh, and hope does not put us to shame because so, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. So I love it because hope. It just says that you're, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, please let this thing happen. Hope is saying I that we, we're we're kind of counting on something to happen that is good, mm. but we don't know. That's the whole thing with hope is it's the belief of a positive thing to happen, but we yeah. don't know. Sometimes that's called your fate. You got to accept it. And that, that whole, everything about that, it says that I'm more. So when you get to hope, like that's the sweet spot. Uh, there's a scene in a movie. Now, Henry, you know, movies so well. So when I, cause I don't know where this came from, but when I share it, he'll be like, Oh, that's this, but it's <laughs> like a, game. it's a superhero oh, movie or something, but right. uh, there's a bus load of kids on a bus and they feel like that's the safe place and that's where they can survive. And somebody in the movie is trying to get them off the bus mm -hmm. and the lead actor's like, no, the only thing they have right now is hope. Leave okay, them you know what, on you know the what bus. Is. Oh, what I is know, it? I know what it is. What Back is it? That's from Pat. The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. yeah. That's Batman. <laughs> but I thought, so <laughs> yeah. Amor Fati was going to happen in that moment. But hope is what they were hanging hope. on to. Hope. Now, they could have died. They could have lived. Go watch the movie if you want to know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, their fate. The baddest of the bone movies. Yeah, yeah. But that scene was just like... Just let them have hope. Yeah. And that's yeah. how that scripture ends is, is uh, hope. Is Let's hope. have hope. Hope is something that can carry people through their nightmares on earth. Mm. When the, my mom was the hope dying of good cancer, happen. I was just hoping that they would figure something out. And I just held on to that for a long time. Yeah. Yes. But it brought me peace. A more fati should be hyphen hope. Except your fate. The hope and that comes in the hope. Lord and the hope that comes in his plan. To, did you have another scripture? Yeah, First Peter four twelve through nineteen. Beloved, Rolling. do Rolling. not be surprised. <laughs> Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, mm. as though something strange were happening oh, to that's you. A great point. Don't but worry. rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, yes. that you may yeah. also rejoice and be glad when His glory is revealed. Mm. And then, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief. If anyone suffers as a Christian. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God mm -hmm. in that name. I love the beginning of that. Don't be surprised. Don't be shocked. Don't, don't be surprised. Don't you? That's the only way we're going to be able to be the salt is if we're not caught off guard mm -hmm. when these things happen. You know, we, we can, okay, it's here. And I can walk in this peace. That brings peace to others and makes others want to know how, how are you how are you doing this? I think that is I think you're hitting the nail on the head. Y'all are hitting that is the key of this whole thing. That's the whole point. Not being surprised. You weren't you didn't you didn't freak out when that when your group lost twenty thousand dollars, Jared. No. And, and you, you, I didn't freak out. I wasn't surprised when my mom died. Right. But I rejoiced in the time I had with her during that suffering. I had a friend go through a divorce. He was going, his his wife was cheating on him, doing all sorts of other crazy things to him. And I did tell him when he, he hit me up, he's like, I'm going, you know, I think this is happening. This is finally going to happen. I said, I, 
I think it's good. I, I don't think this is a good thing what y'all are doing. And um, the piece of advice I gave him, because I'd already been through it too, as I told him, don't be surprised by anything she does. Mm. She's not following the Lord. She's not walking the path on any level. So the things that she's going to do are probably going to blow your mind. But don't be surprised. Don't let it. it, it expect that the worst possible things are going to happen to you over the next year or so. I like what you're saying that because uh, sometimes as Christians, we get shocked when sinners sin, when <laughs> right. unrighteous people act unrighteous. And it's yes. like, why? why would that surprise you? Yeah. Why? Well, They're not following God. Now, when you're acting like a buffoon, yes. you know, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, you. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny, but like, if you, yeah. if you're walking that road, I'm like, mm -hmm. Gabe, what are you? What thinking? are you? Yeah. A Christian. That will catch me off guard, but it should. I shouldn't be surprised when a murderer murders. Yeah. I mean, that's what that that's scripture right. said. Don't yes. be shocked at that. Don't be shocked yeah. at these evil Somebody's atrocities. In, in, in the light of the Lord and it, under the redemption of the Lord. Let me read one more scripture, man. This one's going by so fast. I know. I love this <laughs> today. Man, this is a good, good. I love I it. I'm more I I we're not cutting it off in 43 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yay for that. Yeah. Okay. So this one is in Hebrews chapter 11. That's the coffee book. Chapter in the coffee book. That's where he brews. Chapter 11, and I'm using coffee coasters. That's right. Um, <laughs> okay. Boy, Gabe's tickled over here. That was good stuff. That was a dad joke. That was a dad joke. Okay, it's a good one, though. Okay. That's good. Chapter 11, verse 22. Uh, uh, starting, oh, sorry, starting with verse 24. Nope. What is this uh, Hebrews? Uh, okay, we'll start with, with 24. By faith, Moses, he, Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the, repro the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasure, treasure oh, of Egypt. Oh my gosh, the greater wealth. For he was looking forward to the reward. I mean, he considered reproach by the Lord a greater wealth yes. than having $10 million in his bank account. That's right. He was more wealthy with God's reproach. All the treasure than all the treasure. Yeah, that's right. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. Why? Because he was looking to the reward. I'd kind of like 10 million in my bank account before I got reproached by the Lord just to see what that felt like. I mean, yeah. knowing that God's reproach is going to be amazing, I would just like to know what happened that. Uh, I'll tell you, though. I mean. I'm just kidding. Are you, though? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just look, look, the point of that being look to the reward. If we're looking to the reward, mm -hmm. that's when we're going to be able to. If we're constantly, the reward is not here on earth. Yeah. It's it's in eternity. And if we to to just exclamation point, I just thought of this. Amor fati is loving your fate. If you're a Christian, you know what your fate is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. no matter what your trial is, Everything. no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. amor fati for me is eternity with Christ. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that. that's the ultimate amor fati. Yeah. So on that deep discussion, I am going to end it with another did scripture. We, did we get the pronunciation right? Ah. Gabe, how do you say it, son? Amor Fati. Okay, you're in agreement with me. Jerry. Amor Fati. <laughs> amor. <laughs> that's kind of Italian. Me amor. Really Latin. Amor Fati. Oh, okay. it, that's a Latin word. you got to roll the R. So Amor Fati okay. is a Latin word. I'm going to see if this will play on amor. the mic. I'm going to see if this will play on the mic. I love it. <laughs> not fatey. I explained that to horse. I didn't know he was good. Not fatey, not fatey. This dude's like annoyed. He's like, no, don't be trying. Stop saying it the wrong way. Not fatey, oh, not fatey. That's fate good time. stuff. That's good stuff. That's awesome. Uh -huh. We got fate. it. We got it. We got it. We win. Praise God. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, and I thank you for Gabe and for Jared and, and uh, the blessing that, that they are, Father. 
Um, we ask, Lord, that you help us to represent you well by embracing our fate and loving our fate and loving what you're doing in our lives through the hardships. Uh, help us to be the salt of the earth. We love you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. Now you're calling me fat? Am I fatty? Really, bro?